Good morning, Lee Robinson from American Sentinel Canine. I wanted to make a short video about some pet peeves and, uh, of mine that I see in the protection dog industry as a whole. And uh, we're gonna cover aspects from, involving from the owner to trainers, uh, all the way up to the courtroom. So I hope you stay tuned and, and hear some things. Here it is, 5.45 in the morning. My daughter and I are on our way home from Waffle House. She woke up early this morning, and plus I was tossing and turning thinking about this. So uh, uh, we've had our breakfast and the daylight's coming up so we can make a video now before we get back to work. <clears throat> so what do I mean about pet peeves in the protection dog industry? Well, there's many different types of dogs that are oftentimes labeled as protection dogs, and, and many of these dogs should not be labeled as such. For example, a service dog is not a protection dog. A service dog can, can, can uh, it may be a protection dog, but it may be something else completely unrelated. So there's many different types of service dogs. Next you have uh, patrol dogs. A patrol dog is not a protection dog. It is an apprehension dog. And people need to understand the difference between uh, an apprehension dog and a protection dog. An apprehension dog works for a police force or military type of combative situation where they're using a canine to apprehend a suspect. Um, yeah, they do need to make sure that that suspect is guilty uh, uh, to, to beyond a reasonable doubt to a degree, but uh, I know they're not in court, the, the person's not convicted yet, but generally speaking, they do need to be careful about deploying a dog. However, Police officers have the right to apprehend suspects with the level of force that is necessary to make that apprehension. The civilians and non-military do not have that right. Uh, as a civilian owner of a protection dog, we only have the right to stop a guilty suspect in the act of being guilty and aggressive. <clears throat> we do not have the right to, to apprehend a suspect. So, you know, with that said, a owner of a protection dog needs to use uh, or needs to develop a, a defensive mindset on what they can and cannot do. Otherwise, you're going to be sued and lose everything you own, okay? So, uh, or near about. So, you don't want to be in that situation. Last place you want to be is in court saying that I told my dog to get him. Uh, that's really stupid. And yet, there's a lot of people out there in the, in the uh, protection dog industry that use the same terminology that police officers used, which that can be held against you. You don't have the right to apprehend. So I would not use any type of forward or aggressive terminology because even though the word itself doesn't change the way the dog will be deployed, it, do, it does reflect on your mindset. And the last thing you want to do is be in court displaying an apprehension mindset, an aggressive mindset. You need to have a defensive mindset. So, you know, use we use the word guard, and some people might think it's strange that we use the word guard. I don't care. I think if you think that it's strange that we use the word guard, I would say you might have your head in la-la land because the word guard is a defensive mindset. And it's also really, um, if we look at the, uh, What's the word I want to use? Uh, the sound of the term, guard. It has a very unique sound to it. Uh, phonics, I guess that's the term. And the, the phonics of the term of the word guard is very clear and easy for the dog to hear and, and differentiate between other terminology. Now, as far as the out goes, I don't really like the word out. Yes, it's clear, but it sounds a lot like ow. Uh, and I don't like off either because that sounds a lot like oh now I want my turn I had never come up with the perfect word for out uh, you know and because of that if I say off or out or something like that there's the possibility that when a person says oh the dog could confuse or ouch that the dog could confuse that to be out command and release when I don't want the dog to release however releasing um, prematurely is not as bad as attacking prematurely. So I haven't really uh, made an issue of that, but you know, I definitely don't want to attack prematurely because then my guard dog becomes a liability. 
and I don't want my guard dog to become a liability. So I use the term guard, which is a defensive word. Next, <clears throat> not everybody should own a protection dog, you know? Um, what I consider to be instinctive and normal uh, and a reflex when it comes to addressing a dog's behavior, someone else might have to process and think about it and still implement it incorrectly because we're all different uh, and we all have different strengths and different weaknesses. And so if you're the type of person that is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and say like socially awkward, you have a hard time carrying a conversation with people, um, you're, uh, uh, we're going to use the, uh, the prejudiced static, you know, image of nerdy like uh, where you're a bookworm but you're or you get caught, caught up in the Tai Chi type of mindsets of, of powerball uh, self-defense and you think that's going to work because of some theory or hypothetical then protection dogs are probably not for you because you're being very unrealistic okay so you know you need to be able to be to read the real world what body language is how to respond to body language, how to communicate with people. Um, these, these are requirements for owning a protection dog because if you're, if you're socially awkward, you know, we might, you might be the best neighbor I could have, okay? But that doesn't, you know, I might, I might love you, but that doesn't mean you need a protection dog. You know, you need to have some skills for that. Not everybody can drive a race car. Not everybody can water ski. Um, and not everybody can own a protection dog. You need, you need to have some basic skills on how to interact with animals, okay? And good management. Uh, be responsible, all right? Next, patrol dogs, I already uh, teed up on this a little bit when I talked about terminology, but I didn't really talk about behavior. And that is patrol dogs and protection dogs and sentry dogs are not one and the same. And a lot of your trainers will think that if a dog can do one, a good dog, a dog that's good at one will be good at any of them. That's just not true, okay? There are some dogs that will really excel at sport work or maybe even patrol work. That, and by the difference between those two, those two are very similar. A good sport dog and a good patrol dog are very similar, but they still have some differences. And the difference is being able to be applied in the street. Now there's some people that say, well, if a dog will bite, it'll bite. A bite is a bite. No. Okay, that's not true. A dog that's biting a tennis ball or playing tug of war on a rope um, or killing a rabbit is not the same as a dog that will kill a, a, a hog and it's not the same as a dog that will attack a man that fights back. Okay, so the dog that works on the street needs to be able to take a man that's going to fight back. and. That's, people say, well, a dog that's good in sports should be able to do the same thing. You and I both know that for legal reasons, sports are never going to actually hurt the dog. The closest thing that they come to hurting a dog is an accidental send at too high of a speed. I mean, it's, a, it's an intentional send, but it's a, a bad catch. That could hurt a dog's neck or jaw um, uh, or backbone uh, if it comes in at too high of a speed. But that's an accident. No decoy is going to hammer a dog physically the way a criminal will. A criminal will intentionally kill your dog if it can. And a uh, sport trainer will not do that. Okay. Next. Uh, <coughs> Both of those dogs are forward mindset. Notice I said hog hunting. That's because they're comparable to it, okay? A, uh, a sport dog and a protection dog are comparable to hog hunting in, in the fact that they're both forward mindset. But a sentry dog and a protection dog, um, they don't have to be super forward. They should be forward enough that if you deploy them, they have the confidence to do that. But uh, they can also be more like a, a confident mastiff that Maybe it has a lot of confidence and even some prey drive, but it's just kind of like, don't wake the sleeping beast, you know? You leave them alone, they'll leave you alone. There's some dogs like that. You don't come in their domain and they'll leave you alone. But if you do come in, 
they will be very aggressive. Now, good defensive dogs are really hard to find, but they do exist the same way good defensive people exist. Um, next, let's see. Um, a personal protection dog that you're actually going to take out into town needs to be a reasonably social. Not, I don't mean playing with people. I mean tolerant of people. While a dog that's used at your house doesn't need to be social at all. Um, I saw some conversation about this earlier today, or earlier last night, earlier today, late last night, where someone was saying that if your dog is not uh, able to go to town, you don't have a protection dog because you, it won't be with you. That's nonsense, okay? It's with me when I'm at my house. So uh, just because a dog doesn't, isn't a dog that I take to town doesn't mean it's not use, used at protection. Protection means to protect. And I don't carry a shotgun with me when I walk through Walmart and I do my grocery shopping or when I go to, uh, to, to the post office. I don't carry a shotgun with me, but yet I'm, I have a shotgun in my home for protection purposes. And so the same thing is true for a dog. You don't have to put that dog away when you have company necessarily. If you want to, you can. If you're going to really relax with good friends and you want to put it away, so be it. Get another dog out if you have another dog that's a little more social but still able to protect. <clears throat> but you can also keep that dog on a leash. I've done that before when I've had friends over. I've had a dog on a leash um, until the dog settles down and, and, and adjusts to them. Um, I've done that in my house, okay? Um, and it's very easy to release a leash. Um, next, we have... Uh, uh, well, anyway, those are the main things. So these pet peeves, these rules that people come up with, don't buy into them all. A lot of them are just nonsense and, and people haven't stepped back to think about it. Guarding your property while you're there. Uh, and I saw where somebody responded and said, hey, I have a dog like that and it sleeps by my feet every night. And then he has other dogs that he takes into town for protection. And I agree, that's 100%. All right, Let, protection comes in layers. Y'all have a blessed day.